welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a great day. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Shai, and we are here lounging, relaxing, get in comfortable mood. Just for just to get cozy because it is early while, while I'm recording this. We're back with MJV Animations 8 Horror Stories Anime Compilation July 2020, and this is part. Dulce. Oh no, Dulce. Yeah, so let's get back. The last one was terrific. Not terrific. Terrifying. Dennis, what the? Get sued. Let's go. I admit this story has a very fine line between bizarre and abusive, but overall, it's the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. In okay. All honesty, I've had a lot of creepy this is awkward. Characters. Known a lot of or boy boy for the girl boy I ended up doing very bad things sometimes okay. I almost feel like I'm cursed to make friends with rough edges mm. this whole situation started when I was a sophomore and oh, excuse me I showed up to school one day and noticed a new boy in my class that was your atypical goth girl and this guy was a teenage bad boy dream piercings leather jacket reading some sort of obscure novel I was hooked at first sight. Mm -hmm. I introduced myself, and soon enough we were dating. He will henceforth be referred to as X for the rest of the story. Come on, quick. Like, what's good? Now, let's go. Let's go me. I was brought up in an alcoholic parent's home. And there were many times I was living by myself or with a friend, because one of my parents was in the hospital. And despite the chaos in my family, oh, no. I still managed to go to school every day. And pull in decent enough grades. That's good. After one time too many, however, I was left for two plus months living alone. Hmm. Instead of coming home to an empty house, I asked X if I could live with him since he was closer to school. He and his parents happily welcomed me into their home. At this point in the relationship, well, that was maybe nice. five months in, we were phasing out of the puppy love stage, and I was starting to notice some very serious red flags. X was very mental and started mm. cutting regularly. His parents were very heavy drug users. What? There would be times I would try talking to X and would literally stare off into space and not notice my existence. He was never mean or abusive. Girl, you barely noticed God. I could definitely tell he already was moving, in, moving in with him. And when we started living together, it started to become very evident something was very, very wrong. He started to tell me he thought he was possessed by demons and couldn't control himself. And we both spiraled into moderate drug use. I started uh -oh. skipping school, and he started seeing more of these demons. In all truth, I hadn't realized what a hole I had dug myself into by living with him. And one night, we ended up falling asleep after smoking a bowl and watching a movie. It was a big house, and we were living in the garden level basement two or so floors below his parents and siblings. Around midnight, I was woken up by the most frightening screech I'd ever heard. What the? X was right next to me in bed. What in that? Convulsing and screaming. Look at him, look at her. her. At first, I thought it was just a seizure. You can possess. I've seen friends have seizures before, and I didn't interfere, only looking for one of our cell phones to call 911. As I got up out of the bed, gonna sit there. he looked me dead in the eyes. The blood drained from my veins. I've never seen such hate. Everything seemed to happen in flashes from there. He never broke eye contact as he slowly rose from the bed. It almost looked as if he was a marionette on a set of strings, pulled up with sunken shoulders. A half smile formed on his face as oh, his body my God. He started walking towards me. I can't describe how terrified I was, cornered in the room, opposite to the door. I felt my ears swell and ring. He started screeching at me, coming within a centimeter of my face, never breaking his gaze. I started pushing, yelling at him to cut it out, but it was like trying to push away a stone statue. He would not move. Mm -hmm. He finally started talking. Ranting about the demon and not making a single word of sense. As bizarre as it was, I knew he was having some sort of mental episode. 
I truly did fear for my life and knew I needed to escape. Suddenly, I felt as if I was sucked back into the moment and my senses were incredibly acute. I noticed the window we had cracked open earlier. I pushed the window back, punched through the screen and climbed out as he stood silently staring after me. I'm pretty sure I stayed outside for an hour, hyperventilating before I decided to ring the doorbell. One of his parents answered, very confused, and sent me up with a blanket on the couch on the I floor with no questions asked. In the morning, X came up and acted as if nothing had happened, no matter how much I pestered him about it. It was as if it had all been a bad dream. I made arrangements to stay with another friend that day, and broke up with X about a week after, once I was actually able to face yes, it. Yes, let it go, let it go, Sometimes let it go. I you better do it. some sort of sick joke to get me out of his house or out of the relationship, but I watched unshocked in the years after, as he fell into severe drug abuse and mental illness. At one point, I went to a school counselor and told them how worried I was for him. Drugs, not the way to go. A grudge against me. After everything that happened, I really started to feel sorry for him, and sort of weirdly forgave him for what he did. He tried contacting me a few times after everything that happened, but as the years went by, I heard less and less. Last I heard, he was addicted to meth and living on the streets. What? When I was 20 years old, my brother was 15. Our parents were out of town. My brother had some friends over one night. As I walked out of the door to pick up food, I overheard them talking about the supernatural. Mm -mm. What I didn't know was one of them had yep. run over a spirit board. While I was gone, they decided to call on the spirit. After a few times of asking for a spirit to appear to them, they got their wish. The lights in the house went up. That. A low, eerie laugh assumed the whole house. And not one of the seven could move. They all say they could see a shadow circling the table. Mm. But the light from the neighbor's house was dense. All of them knew they should run. Yet, they couldn't even move a finger. No one could speak, scream, or cry. As I pulled into the driveway, the seven teenagers came running out of the house screaming and crying. They reached me quickly, but as they were running to me, I saw the blinds in the living room pull apart in the middle aggressively. <gasps> Ooh. Before the process, what I had seen, all of them were trying to tell me what had just happened. Mm. The front door suddenly slammed, knocking the already torn blind to the floor. Although you think that it would be the end of the story, but it's not. Someone still had to go back in the house, or at least lock the door. The 17s weren't an option, and I was the only adult in sight. I had my brother go with me since this is partly his fault. We walked to the front door slowly. Oh, no, no, no. Y'all going in, too. Y'all invited these and I spirits. I on the handle of the door. I thought about it like ripping off a band-aid. Yeah, doing, doing the um, Ouija Wars, you never know. The door open with the one swoop. The what kind of ghost she gonna get? And it hit us like a slap in the face. The odor was a mixture of flowers and something rotten. It took us a moment to overcome the horrific smell. Before entering the house, I tried to turn on the light by oh, the door. No. The outside light and the hall light turned on right away. I shouldn't have been surprised to see that the house was in shambles. Wow. If I hadn't seen the blind rip open or see the door slam on its own, I would have thought my brother had entertained a wild party. As we entered the house, I began telling the entity in a loud, demanding voice, leave this home. You're not welcome here. Ooh. As I spoke, I walked to where the spirit board was on the floor. When I picked up the board, I said, this conversation has ended goodbye the front door slammed on its own again but the odor was gone oh, yeah. we cleaned up and honestly we never told my parents i rebuke you in the name of jesus that's right in 2011 on my 21st Let that birthday go. No. i took it upon myself to go backpacking to the canadian mountains all on my own i had gone backpacking and camping many times before but never on my own i wanted this birthday significance to be rooted in the fact that I had challenged the great outdoors all on my own. On my third day out, I reached my destination. It was an old farmhouse sitting on its own in an overgrown field out in the middle of nowhere. I had discovered it on Google Earth and was eager to check it out before heading back. In addition to a first aid kit, a compass, and a utility knife, I was carrying a Smith & Wesson Governor revolver, which carried six shots. 
It was the crown jewel of my father's collection, and he had loaned it to me for protection while I was out in the woods alone. Mm -hmm. He made sure that I had practiced with it several times and knew how to use it before I set off. And now, as I approached the farmhouse, I was pleased that I had taken the time, because I wasn't entirely sure the place was abandoned. Every window on the ground floor was boarded up, and a faded plastic pinwheel spun lazily from where it was stuffed into the dirt by the front door. I walked right up the front steps, and feeling somewhat foolish, I knocked. When no one answered, I walked around the perimeter of the house. There was an ancient rusty fire escape hanging down from one of the upstairs windows, and an old single door refrigerator lying on its side out amongst the tall grass. Okay. When I walked back around to the front door of the house again, I tried the knob. It was rusty, but I managed to turn it with both hands and the door swung open with a creak. I was just about to walk in, when I felt the sensation of eyes on me, and I spun around. Out by the tree line, I saw what appeared to be a man with a long gray beard staring mm -hmm. at me. I immediately felt foolish and guilty, and waved at him my other hand reaching into my belt to rest on the handle of the gun. Hi there. Is this your place? I'm sorry. I'll leave. For maybe ten seconds, the man just stared at me. Then, without saying anything, he turned and walked back into the trees. That made me nervous. I didn't know how to interpret it. And the last thing I wanted to do was walk back into the woods knowing that he was out there. I decided to enter the house and close the door behind me. I slid a dusty stool in front of the door, so I would hear it tip over if anyone entered. I spent the next hour exploring the house, occasionally glancing out of the windows to see if the man had reappeared. When it finally began getting dark out, I was still nervous and unwilling to leave the house, so I walked up a narrow flight of stairs to the attic, locked the door behind me, set up my gas lantern, and unrolled my sleeping bag. After a light dinner, I updated my journal turned off the light and prepared to get some sleep oh but after a minute or so i heard creaking on the stairs and my eyes shot open i looked over towards the door and i heard the faint sound of footsteps climbing the narrow staircase i threw myself out of the sleeping bag grab grabbed gun. my flashlight and my gun and pointed them both towards the door i called out who's there if i'm trespassing i'm sorry i'll pack up and leave just don't try to open the door I have a gun. The footsteps continued to climb without hesitation. When they were just outside the door, I heard the doorknob rattle. I made my voice sound as furious as I could. Don't try to get in. I told you I have a gun. Just tell me who you are. There was a moment of hesitation, and then the doorknob began to jiggle harder. Stop it. I'll fucking shoot. I made myself count to five. But the doorknob continued to jiggle violently. Last chance. Shots fire. I leave Shots fire. To five again. And when the jiggling didn't stop, I fired two shots through the door, aiming low, intending to hit the stranger's legs. Dude. As soon as the shots rang out, the knob stopped jiggling, and there was silence. There was no sound of anyone falling backwards down the steps or a gasp in pain. There was just silence. This probably he buffed him. And cautiously He's walked not. towards the door. I unlocked it and opened it. I nearly shat myself when I saw there was nothing standing there. There was no blood, no body, no indication that anyone had been standing there. I slammed the door, locked it again, and dragged an ancient rusty armchair in front of the door to block it. For the next several hours, I would doze off for a while and then wake up again keeping my gun nearby until the sun rose. After it was light enough, I gathered my belongings and crawled out of the window and went down the fire escape. But when I was ah. about 20 steps away from the house, I turned. And the guy. Looking back at me from the attic window was the bearded old man. I drew my gun and aimed it at him. Oh. But I didn't shoot. I did it as a warning not to follow me. Then I sprinted back into the woods. Two years later, in the summer of 2013, I returned to the house with four of my friends and showed them all the bullet holes in the attic door. I still go camping every now and then, but I always make
make sure I bring my handgun because you never know who might be watching you from the shadows. Mm -mm. That's right. Shots I'm fired. three years old. And as a child, my family and I would spend all three months of summer at my grandpa's huge farmhouse in Tirana, Albania, which is around seven miles from the nearest town. Apart from an old computer, my grandparents have a complete lack of recent technology. So I often found myself exploring woods, taking long relaxing walks, which I liked because it gave me time to think. And a lot of the time, I went hunting with my dad and grandpa in search of coyotes and foxes, which would kill our livestock. Just to be more clear, I'd been taught to shoot for years at this point, and I found myself to be quite a good shot. One particular day, it was around 1 p.m., Bored out of my mind, I decided to take my grandpa's two German shepherds for a walk. Eventually, we got to one of my favorite places, a crystal clear river, around seven foot wide. Ooh. Walking, I noticed a tall man on the other side of the river, with his back turned to me. He was wearing a pair of black jeans and a hoodie, which I found odd, considering it's around 80 degrees this time of year. Even more concerning is that there's usually nobody around for at least a few miles. Despite this, I spoke to him and asked if he was lost or if he needed any directions. He ignored me completely, not even acknowledging I was there. I continued to walk and had eventually made some distance mm -hmm. from this person. Then I heard him crossing the river and come across to the side I was standing on. I turned around to see him just standing there with his eyes wide open, He'll kill you. almost as if he was surprised to see me. Trying not to think much of this, I continued walking, only to notice that he was following me at a slightly faster pace. I turned around and said, Do you want something, sir? I said this in confidence, right. simply because I had my grandpa's two dogs with me. He began to walk much faster towards me. What a dog is it? Now I was genuinely scared. I knew nothing of this man, who he was, what he wanted, if he was armed. So I ran. To avoid leading him directly to my grandpa's farmhouse, I cut through a small woodland, at which point I thought I'd lost him and continued to make my way back home. I spoke nothing of this to my parents. That same night, I went ahead to my room. You better say something. At, that night. at around That's what I would do. I was woken with the sound of leaves being stepped on right outside the sliding door to my room. Slightly alarmed, I decided to not get worried, hoping it was just one of the dogs. So I lay back down, facing away from the door. A few seconds later, I saw the shadow creep up at my door. I was frozen in pure shock. Uh -oh. Slowly turning around, I saw the figure of a man. I rushed to switch on the lamp by the side of my bed and quickly picked up my grandpa's old Carcano rifle. Trying yeah. to sound intimidating, yeah. I told the guy to get He's away shaking. in a rather squeamish voice. He stood there for a few seconds Shoot and then quickly pushed my sliding door to the side. Oh. Knowing full well I didn't have it in me to shoot him, you got the I screamed right. my dad as loud as I could. You got the right. He continued to stare at me until my dad barged the door open and he ran into the woodland. In anger, my dad took the rifle out of my hands and started shooting into the night ooh, in hopes ooh, of one of the rounds ooh. catching him. The next morning, the police were called, but could do nothing about it apart from file a report. I didn't know if it was How the about a or not. Order? So again, I ended up saying nothing. I thought if I did, I could get an innocent man arrested. Around two weeks later, I still hadn't gotten over what had happened. On that day's paper, we saw an article titled 18-year-old boy murdered in his sleep. I translated this as best as I could from Albanian. At the bottom of the article, there was a picture of the man I saw at the river with the same surprised expression as if he had no idea what was going on. Mm -mm -mm. My parents didn't let me fully read the article, knowing it would just make me feel worse. To this day, I feel two things. Regret that I didn't pull the trigger. And guilt. 
knowing that if I had, that boy would still be alive today. Mm. Mm-hmm. His figure still haunts me. Mm-mm-mm. People, people, people. People gotta relax. And I know it's a different situation, but yeah, you're smart enough. Uh, excuse me, just pick up the gun. At least one shot would have probably got him. And make sure you lock the door. Lock the door. And I would have said something. Oh, this guy was following me when I was um, walking the dogs or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And the police would have came to the perimeter. And they would have probably stopped the um, case. But it happens, it's okay. But shots fired, man. Shots fired. So tell me guys what you think. Tell me guys what you think about this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for tuning into the video. And until next time, I have the most awesome, positive day. Till next time.